Hi guys and welcome back to the channel. Now today's video is a bit of a different one and it's quite an experimental one and I've no idea how it's going to go to be honest. In fact at the moment you've probably got a better idea than me based on the thumbnail and the title of this video as to how it's gone. Um, at the moment I've still got no idea. Now a couple of weeks ago I had the idea to go on eBay, type in film camera, view by cheapest and just get the cheapest buy it now film camera that I could find. Didn't want to worry about uh, auctions and bids and waiting for things to end, just wanted a buy it now camera and the only caveat being that it didn't say that it was for spares or repairs or anything so it should be a working camera. Get the cheapest film camera that I could find, go and take some photos with it and share the results with you. However, I forgot to put in 35mm film camera uh, and so when the results came up, the cheapest one wasn't actually a 35mm film camera, it was a 110 film camera and that was the Hanimex 108F. Now I can pretty much guarantee that you've never heard of it, uh, I'd never heard of it and doing a Google search on it after I'd bought it reveals that not a lot of people have heard of them, not a lot of people have used them and I actually couldn't find pretty much any information about this camera anywhere online other than that it's from about 1983, that Hanimex stopped making cameras in the late 80s um, and that's pretty much it. There were a couple of examples of shots taken on a 108F but that's it. So anyway, the price. This camera, and you can search on eBay at completed listings so that you know I'm telling the truth, this camera cost me £3.79. Um, so yeah, £3.79, buy it now, it came within about three or four days. And obviously it comes in this lovely retro vintage box. You can tell how old this is because it's not even got a barcode anywhere on there. So yep, yeah, comes in its box. We've actually still got its warranty and guarantee card, although I think that may be a little bit out of date now. We've got the instruction manual and we've got the camera itself. Now, if I just put these to one side for a minute, you may well recognize uh, cameras that look similar to this. So there was the old uh, Kodak Instamatic and a lot of 110 film cameras look exactly like this. Um, 110 film is a cartridge that goes in the back here um, and you normally get 12, 20 or 24 exposures with it. Uh, it's a lot smaller than 35mm as obviously you can tell from the thickness of this. Um, other than that I don't really know much about 110 film, 110 film cameras. All I know is that it was sort of a, a cheaper film that was brought in in the 80s to try and sell to um, sort of not uh, not professionals, just consumers. So of little cameras that could fit in your pocket that you could take to like parties and things like that. Um, this is really, really basic. Um, it does actually take a flash, although I haven't got a flash for it. You can put a flash on top of here. But other than that, this back bit here opens like this. This is where your film goes in. You put your cartridge in there, pull this shut, and then at the bottom, this here is how you advance the film. And this is how you take a photo. Now, as you'll have just heard there, it does sound like it's working. I don't know if it's gonna be working or not, and that's part of the experiment of this video. I've absolutely no idea. So, this is it, the Hanimex 108F. I've ordered some film for it online. I've got some Lomography, uh, one, uh, Lomography 110 Tiger, I believe is what the film's called. Um, ordered that online. The film actually costs twice as much as the camera, which um, says a lot about how cheap this is. Uh, I've actually ordered two rolls, um, just, to, just to check. The first roll I'm actually gonna take out today and we're gonna try this camera out today. Now, because I've no idea if this works or not, um, and I've no idea what the film's going to be like, uh, I didn't want to waste the model's time, so we're just going to go out, because it's still a relatively nice day today, even though the temperature's dropped, it is quite bright. So I'm just going to go out into the peaks, uh, get a few landscape shots, get them developed, and then see what happens. But it's going to be difficult, because the only thing that I actually know is the ISO of the film. I know the ISO of the film, this is... Fixed aperture, fixed shutter speed and fixed focal length. Now from looking through the viewfinder I can see roughly what the focal length is. It looks something around sort of 35 millimeters. I'm not sure to be honest. That's just what it looks like with the naked eye but I don't know to be honest. The shutter speed 
I'm guessing, and this is a complete guess, I'm guessing that it's going to be around one 125th of a second, just because that's the standard speed on most 35mm film cameras. So I'm guessing at that, the aperture, I'm guessing somewhere around sort of 5.6, sort of a, a mid-range aperture. Uh, I may be completely wrong with both of those things, maybe completely wrong, um, but all I'm going to do is I'm going to sort of expose based on that. Obviously, there's nothing that I can change, so the weather and the outside lighting is going to be what determines the exposure of the shots. But we're going to pop the film in, go out into the peaks, and see what we can get with the Hanimex 108F. <laughs> So back home now, uh, I couldn't film this bit at Lady Bar because it was wet through everywhere so there was nowhere to sit but back home all cleaned up myself and the dog uh, and that's it we've shot our first roll of 110 film. Now it's actually a week after the introduction to this video because although I said on that day that it looked quite bright as soon as I got the camera and everything in the car ready to set off the heavens opened and it absolutely battered it down and I've been really busy this week so today's actually the first chance that I've had to go out and get some content um, with this camera. Although earlier on in the week, I did have a shoot in Leeds. So while I was there, I took it and managed to get sort of half a dozen or so shots there, just so that I'd got a bit of a bit of a comparison, some more urban shots compared to today's landscape shots. Um, so that's, that's the first reel of film done. Uh, I've absolutely no idea what the images are gonna come back like. A couple of things that I have picked up. Firstly, the focal length is definitely more than I first had expected. Uh, I thought originally it was about 35 millimeters, but I'm sure that it's closer to 50 or maybe even sort of 60, 65 millimeters. Although I'll have a better idea once I get the images back. Uh, the other thing is to advance the shutter. You actually have to, uh, to push it in twice, which I didn't realize. At first I pushed it in and then wondered why the shutter button wasn't working. And then realized that you have to actually advance it twice between frames as well. Um, so Peak Imaging, where I'm taking the film to get developed, they're not open today, today's a Friday. So they're back open Monday morning. So I'm gonna drop the film in then, and the next time I speak to you will be once I've got the images back and we can have a look through them together. Okay, so I've got the images back now. And I just want to say a huge thank you to Peak Imaging in Sheffield. I actually only dropped the film off yesterday morning and this afternoon I got an email with my download link to all the images. Now, there's good news and bad news. So the good news is that the camera works. So every single frame came out, uh, there were no leaks, no burns, nothing like that. So the camera is in full working order, which is a relief. And obviously that's something that I didn't know until I got the images back. The bad news is that the quality of those images is terrible. No other way around it, the quality is terrible. However, I do think that there are a few things that can be changed to get better results from the camera. Now looking at the images, and I'm just going to have a look at some of my iPad while I'll bring them up on screen for you here. If we look at the images from Lady Barra Reservoir, you can see that this was quite an overcast day, it was a very cold day. And those two things have combined to make all of these images blurry and a little bit washed out. So because it was overcast, I don't think that there was enough light, so everything seems to be a little bit underexposed. Um, but also because it was so cold, uh, my hands were shaking and so that's why there's a lot of blur on here I feel. I think that with a steadier hand you could definitely get much sharper images. 
obviously they're not going to be tack sharp but I'm sure that you can get better quality than I've achieved here. Now if we look at the images from Leeds where this was still an overcast day but a lot brighter you can see that these are a bit more balanced and um, there is a bit more dynamic range in these and also they're not quite as blurry. Yes there's still a lot of green in there but they're not quite as blurry. So as I say, I think if you were shooting on a brighter day with a steadier hand, I do think that you'd get much better results. And that is something that I am going to do. I did actually get uh, two rolls of the Lomography um, Tiger 200 film. So I have got another roll that I am going to try. I'm going to try that on a much brighter day. And I'm sure that I'll probably do a video when I do uh, come around to doing that. Now, speaking of that film stock, now Lomography pushed this as uh, a stock that gives really punchy, vibrant colours, which, as you've just seen from the images, we definitely didn't get. Now, don't get me wrong, on a brighter day, you will get back brighter colours, I'm sure. But I was expecting a little bit more in terms of those colours being really, really quite punchy and having a lot of contrast to them. But I am going to reserve that judgement until I've shot in optimal conditions for this camera and for this film stock. A huge thank you to Analog Wonderland, which is where I got the, uh, the, the film from. And you can get a wide range of both 35mm, medium format, and then sort of random films like... 110 film uh, from there so I will make sure that I pop their link down below. Now look you cannot argue with the results that we got from a camera that costs less than a cup of coffee. Now yes you do have to take into account the fact that you need to double the cost for the film and then double it again for the development of that but that when the camera itself costs £3.79 the results that we got are pretty hard to argue with. As I mentioned I am going to shoot another roll of this film uh, so I will do a video on that in future but other than that I hope that you found this interesting um, as I mentioned at the beginning starting out I had no idea what direction this video was going to go in but thankfully we have got some results we have been able to have a look at them and hopefully we'll get even better results in the future so I definitely think that this is a camera that you can just throw in your camera bag and on those bright days you can use it and maybe get just something a little bit different to your 35mm or your digital shots other than that Please like this video if you haven't already. Drop down in the comments down below what you thought of the images. If you've tried using any sort of random old film stocks. And as always, I'll see you in the next video.